logged in and see who's all going to join tonight. I'm showing green. That's a good thing. Twitter up here. Got some folks in the house. Get the stream deck over. It's over here. I don't think it has the focus though. Focus now. Turn off the fan. You guys hear me? Everything good? We were playing all the we were playing with all the settings the other day. Let me go over here. Here we go. Hear and see you. Yeah, UK was getting a hurricane. Hopefully they're all, hopefully we have some of our, well, it's pretty late right now. And you, I mean, it's like, what, two in the morning or something? You, three in the morning in the United Kingdom? I think we have anybody probably joining us from there. Let's get some folks on. Have a strong 44. We're going to try to do a quick episode tonight, guys. We're working on a couple uh, smaller episodes that'll be uh, coming out hopefully tomorrow and then maybe Wednesday afternoon. Um, so I have two in the pipe right now. Uh, we're going to be doing a real clear and concise one on uh, a video that you can send to your parents essentially if you want to try to buy some Bitcoin from Coinbase. I'm trying to make that really clear and concise. We get enough of those questions to just say what are all the steps. So that's going to be a very short video on that. And then... Um, we have some details on how to take the Vegas 64 or the 56 and mod it up to a 64. So I've been working on that one too. So we'll get that out there for folks that care about that. And then we'll see uh, we'll see what else is until this week. We got a lot going on. I'm gonna try to get some coverage on some of the new mineable coins. We'll be making sure that we have the multi miner updated here in the next week or so look at compiling for Bitcoin gold because um, there's people asking me all the time asking if it's gonna if we're gonna have the Bitcoin gold which is I think gonna be based on equal hash which is gonna be like Zcash you know uh, mining when they fork which I think is October 25th um, so for the folks that are not tracking that Bit there's a group that's gonna fork the current uh, Bitcoin um, and make it GPU mining with equal hash algorithm. So that's coming up on the 25th. Uh, who knows what if that'll do anything or if anything happens. A lot of people are just like free coins, but we'll see if that's there. But we'll try to make that with the multi-miner, have a release out there for that for everybody. Um, I've had a few people ask me about the the latest Ethereum fork, which is not the one, the Byzantine that just came out, but some folks try to split it off and uh, have, I think it's called uh, Ethereum Vega maybe. I haven't looked into it too much. We'll take a look at it and see if people are interested in trying to mine that, but um, we'll see. Uh, tonight is pretty straightforward and simple. We did get the P106s in. I don't know if I have an extra one over here. That way I don't have to unplug one. Let me pull one out of the box here. The way you guys can see. So this build tonight is essentially the B250 ASUS Mining Expert Board. It's the 19 GPU board. We've been playing with this for the last week and a half, trying to get the thing to actually run 19, 19 cards. Um, we have the... So for all the gamers and everybody out there shouldn't hate this video because these are all mining cards. No I.O. So you can keep your hate mail down that we're not using and um, using any retail graphics cards. But these are the P106. These are the Manly ones uh, for the NVIDIA. Uh, so we got some of these, which is a requirement evidently for this board. That's one of our kind of pet peeves with it. I do not like having to mix cards and boards. 
It'd be nice to just do 19 cards if they're going to do 19. But evidently you need to have P106s, at least 8 of them, to run with any other series of AMD cards. Or NVIDIA evidently also you could run 1060s, 1070s, whatever here. And you can run the P106s on this side um, if you're running Linux. And then we have the... Sapphire Nitros, this is another video that's coming out. We're doing a, a quick and concise uh, walkthrough on the Sapphire Nitro uh, mining card. Again, this doesn't have any I.O. We just did a live stream a while back, uh, a couple days ago, and covered these and the modding of these. These are about 28 mega hash mining cards. They get about, about 80 watts. I think we got them down to 85 watts, somewhere around there, um, per card. Uh, and again, mining cards RX series. So... This is 11 of those and 8 of the P106s. And we kind of you can kind of see it in the mini cam here. I had it on there before this wire mesh of stuff. The way we kind of have this here. And that's all of the bring this up. This is a, a disaster right here just the way we have this set up, but we wanted to make sure that everything was plugged in and working and then this would go into a kind of a rig setup. We are using the 2400 watt. Uh, I, I'd be amiss to not call this a server PSU. This is kind of a Frankenstein. This is not a, I think it's based on a server PSU design, but it's not, this is like crafted by uh, China, essentially. This isn't like the normal HP ones that you can get. And then we're using some of these uh, eight pin to two six pin splitters here we'll put these in the description below but what this does is take one of the uh, eight pins off of this and then splits it to two six pins for the risers down here so that's what that's for and then we're also using as you can see here the eight pin here on each of the cards so about half of these are right now are all using off that 2400 watt PSU and then you can see we've used at least three of these adapters which goes to six of the risers there and then over here too we're still using those those same splitters uh, to power the the actual risers and then we have the 1200 P2 from EVGA covering the um, power supply there so that's the primary power supply, the configuration we got plugged in here. We are not using C, we are not using B on the 24 pin. We are using A, that is what the 1200 uh, watt power supply is being used for right now. So I'm just trying to give everybody an understanding there. Um, and then we did have the, the four pins up here plugged in. So you have three four pins. The manual says to put those three four pins in We've tried it both ways. It works both ways with or without it, but just considering we were just trying to get 19 to work, we started with this in. It does want it from one strand though. So one four pin strand, you know, uh, rail essentially, that it has those three plugged in. So that's kind of the setup. Right now that we got going on with this, so. Do you have any links to that? Server power supply? Uh, we do, and we will put it in the description. I did not get it before we started this video, but we we do. We this this was about ninety bucks, ninety a hundred dollars, somewhere around there, shipped from DHL. So um, from them, so it's a pretty cheap power supply. Or actually, wait a minute, we paid ninety for it, and then I think I had to pay like thirty five shipping. So um, about one hundred and twenty five shipped for 2400 watts which has just these these eight pins and it's got well, how many strands one two three four five six strands of three so that's 18 um, of the eight pins you can get this with a 24 pin and the actual uh, sata connectors too you can order that version i think it's a little more uh, but this is just kind of like a dual inlet 110 watt per inlet so you'll need two circuits essentially, 2400. If you get the one that has the extra 24 pin and the other connectors on it, um, with the like the eight pin for the CPU, um, that it, they rate them at 1600 watts, uh, and then so it's a more like a traditional power supply. 
This is kind of more purpose built. So they kind of sell these for GPUs, but they also sell them under the marketing for like an ASIC. Because really for an ASIC, you don't need the 24 pin, you don't need the CPU pin, eight, eight pin out for that. You would just plug this in essentially into the ASIC, You're like if you're getting a dash miner or something like that, and you just need the essential of the power here. So it gives you 2,400 watts for it. Do those wires get warm? They do not. Uh, and I've had this running on, well, I've had it on 1070s and I've had it on F RX 580s dual mining. And they, we did use the temperature gun on it. And we did take, if you look on our Twitter, we do have a, an image of this running to see we were using the thermal gun on it to make sure that we weren't overheating any of these wires. And it was running fine. I was running it both on powered risers, you know, using as the powered riser and as the supplemental power into the eight pins and it never got too warm at all. It's actually using a lot higher gauge cabling than what is traditionally in these, these cables here. So I think they beefed up the cables. Power supply doesn't get that hot, but the most we've ever had on this is about 1400 watts. So this is 20, rated at 2400 watts. I've never really pushed it. So this essentially would push it if we were getting it going. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fire this up, make sure that it sees all 19 cards. I will kind of give you a spoiler alert if you're on here just briefly. Um, none of the current OS's that we've tried, and we have them all here, we have Pimp OS, we have um, Simple Miner, uh, we have uh, ETH OS and NV OS. So we got four OS's here tonight. And none of them work <laughs> with with uh, the P106s. I, I think a couple of them identify um, identify the cards, but then it fails. Uh, so bottom line, this episode tonight, we're not going to get really heavy into seeing the capabilities of the mining. I think we have to go in there, and we're either going to have to build a fresh copy of Ubuntu and then deploy the specific drivers for these cards because none of the OS is out of the box right now we're working with it. And that's part of the the, the other issue in general is that plug and play right now for 19 GPUs just isn't there from what I'm seeing right now. So if we got folks from Pimp OS or Simple Mining OS tuning in or catch this after the recast tomorrow after it's um, posted out on the thing, um, you know, there might be an opportunity if you're the runner, if you own or run that OS that, that reach out to us at bitsbetripping.com and, uh, you know, obviously prove that you're that person that, that runs that OS, we, you know, we're open to sending you, uh, or I'm open at least to sending you one of the cards to see if we can get it working, get it fixed for the OS for anybody else that's buying. Um, so we'll give you a, a you know, just a, a temporary use uh, of trying to make sure that we can get a driver working for this for the community. So I want to work with folks or, you know, we can work on a remote session or something, but I want to get one of the OS is out of the box. Now we are gonna take a separate effort and build a separate copy of, of Ubuntu, deploy the latest kernel, and then we'll work to see if we can get drivers loaded and all that kind of stuff. But for tonight, we're gonna to get it booted up, look through the options that we set on the BIOS to make sure you can get 19 cards working, and we're gonna bring that video to you tonight for this. Basic price point of the mining cards? Uh, so, the mining cards right now, if you can find a wholesaler that can sell them, you can get them for the high twos for these. The These ones right here, unless you can find somebody that can import them for you, you're going to be in threes. I think they're like 330, which is way overpriced. These things should be like mid twos. All of these should not be any more than 220, 230 to make them competitive with any retail option out there. It does not make sense. So this is kind of out of the gate, an endorsement of not endorsing to purchase these cards for mining because they're just too overpriced. That makes no sense. The P106s make a good fight because these things hardly use any electricity and they're super cool. Like these things do not get hot at all. These things get all the way up to 24 mega hash. They use like 65 to 72 watts. That's it. So they don't use hardly any, any electricity compared to most mining cards and give you 24 mega hash. That's really nice, um, and they, when they're at full bore, they're like 50 Celsius, 46 Celsius. These things don't get hot at all. So, like from a standpoint of what they did to optimize this to be super cool and get about 24 mega hash, they did a good job. But it's still not worth 330 bucks. 
not when you have a normal 1060 that can get really close to these same kind of numbers. So the, the, the pricing's a little off because this doesn't have the same value proposition as a retail version. A retail version, you got IO. You can resell it to a gamer or somebody that wants to purchase it for some other reason. There's other things you can do with it. One of the use cases we want to try with these, once we get an OS working with it, is I want to try other potential use cases other than mining with them just to see if people can use these in the TCC mode, which is the Tesla cluster mode, and if we can, um, the Tesla core cluster, or cluster core, one of the two, uh, modes where you can use it as like a, a remote render farm for like Adobe or, or um, folding at home or something like that. So where you could have another potential use case that somebody could buy them for. But um, the value proposition right now, they're just super overpriced. And what it comes down to is if people are getting them for like the mid twos, they're importing them in and they're just raising the price because they had the cost of buying stock, holding stock, and then trying to sell it and try to make some kind of profit. Um, so uh, right now we're just, you know, we buy all the stuff that we have when nobody gives us any of this stuff. So we're taking that kind of initial risk and just to make sure you guys are educated on it. Um, and you guys are doing us solids when you're clicking links for us. I mean, that's just kind of a mutual relationship, right? So we try to make sure that does this work? What does it do? How does it work? Is it, you know, here's how it's configured or how we've at least got it to work. And that's what we're trying to bring to you guys. So well, let's go ahead and fire it up. Now this is going to get a little louder just because this thing doesn't know a volume setting. It just turns on and it's kind of loud. It does spin up like a traditional power supply does with uh, like from a server power supply where it'll spin up the fans real high and then it'll drop it down. Um, and it's it's got like an on and off and that's about it. There's no other real features with it. You got any questions before we fire this thing up? No, you did no, okay, good. Yeah, I saw the price. They'd be worth about 175 If these things were 175 189 they could print them. They, it would be like printing money. People would buy these for that kind of money. 24 mega hash at 70 watts a piece, $175. You would sell every one that you produced. So any any mining companies or NVIDIA or any executives that just happen to find our, our channel, and if you have any influence on driving down prices for these mining cards, that's your price point. That's your price point that you're going to move a lot of product on and get people from buying up all the gamer cards. People would have a value proposition to move to that if the pricing was around that 175, 179. It just makes it to where people don't have these huge ROIs right away that they're like, you know, is this going to take me two years to pay this off? If you're buying $500 cards, it's, it, it's going to be a while, right? So there's that. Let's kick that on. So that's the 1200 that's powering the main part of the board. And then here's a little bit of volume. The hair dryer. Spins up, spins down. Everything's on. Let's go ahead and make sure. Let's switch to this view as I go ahead and turn it on. So for the folks that haven't seen this, this thing has a diagnostic to let us know. There's that spin up. These things kind of light up blue. I'll show you a closer. They're blue and they're just on until they get an OS on them. And then they uh, they flip over. Did we, did we leave an OS on this? I don't even know. We didn't? Okay, so we're just getting the post screen. There it is, 19 cards, all green. That's what we were trying for, for a little bit here. And the only thing that makes that work is the fact that we have P106s. Okay, so we don't have an OS plugged in right now, so that's, that's all that did. So that's just going to a pixie boot right now. We're gonna shut down this and hopefully not break a fan. Let's, uh, I'm just gonna kill power here. Now that spins up just like a server does. When you first kill it, it's dumping its capacitors. The power is actually off and then it spins down. So that thing's got some serious capacitors in it because I just killed the power on it. And it sits there and idles out until it's, until it's all the way off. And there it goes down. That thing has a lot of capacitor space. You sit there and spin those fans like that? That's crazy. So let's get an OS plugged into this. Um, I think this one was... Was this ETH? Yeah. ETH OS? We'll let it... Yeah, we had that one there. the B 
BB tears over tonight. All right, so now we're gonna we're gonna re-engage this guy here and turn this guy on. Kick it over. So this is Ethos. We're gonna let it boot up. Let it see what it sees. You guys, hear that whoosh? Thing's loud. So if you're considering buying that, because you're just like, oh, you know, it's a cheaper power supply, you got to also consider the volume on it and where you're going to put it. We'll get all of the links to these down in below. Okay, we can see right there, it's seeing the 11 RX 470s. It is not seeing the P106s. So the boys over at GPU Shack got some updating to do. We'll let this go. I think this actually hard locks and does not work out of the box. Can you explain the motherboard again and how it can support some of the cards? Uh, the motherboard, while that's going, we'll go to another screen here. Um, because all that's going to do is you guys are going to sit there, have that box around here somewhere. Oh, it's setting on it. <laughs> We're not getting right, grabbing that. So this is the AZ, ASUS B250. And it, it's the mining expert. That's the name of the board. If you look it up, ASUS B250. Oh, listen, that's spinning up. It's kicking up the, kicking up the, uh, RX, uh, 470s. So that's the B250 Mining Expert motherboard. It has 19 slots on it. That first post screen is probably one of the best enhancements to mining boards that there is. It gives you an indicator if there's an air on the board with the risers or if it's not seeing a card. That's a nice feature. That's the best feature of this board. However, most of the folks that are buying this right now are only using 13 or less cards because you have this issue where you need to have P106 which are the mining NVIDIA cards. Anybody following this? That is just the NVIDIA cards that are the mining cards. So you got the P10690 and you got the P106 100s. The 100s are a lot more common. Uh, usually those are the six gig cards. And essentially it's just a GTX 1060 that has none of the IO ports on it. So no DVI, no HDMI, no display port, nothing. It's a daughter card that plugs into the board and just handles the mining activity. It uses a modified driver, the normal NVIDIA driver, to, to operate. You can see that that emitting glow... Oh, we have another one here. Todd on the clutch. So that's the board. That's what it looks like. It'll sit there and say 19 GPU mining. Part of our issue with this is that it doesn't... I mean, it has it in the... the um, and this thing is... Uh, we're going to give this another minute and see if it kicks on. Well, you got the. There's like a cobweb. Is it a cobweb? I think it's just the thread. There you go. Um, yeah, it doesn't. It's not very defining uh, anywhere on the marketing here, where it, it says it requires the P106s. When you see the manual, it has a, a matrix. Is this thing spinning up? Are we using electricity right now? Look at these. 200 watts there. What's the other uh, kilowatt showing? Because this thing's definitely. Uh, these cards are hot. It's acting like it was one of mine. Is that other kilowatt down there? What is the order of the cards again? And the first or That's using 600 watts yeah. and that's using 200. So these things are actually doing something. I'm going to let it set. It says that it's trying to do something. And yeah, they're definitely doing something. We could show the... What was the question? NVIDIA first or AMD first? Uh, NVIDIA. NVIDIA, yeah. So NVIDIA's got to go in the A bank first. And then your AMD cards can go in B and C. And we'll show you guys a picture of what that looks like here in a second. Actually, we could show you the board. We'll show it up close. But we'll show you on the mini cam here. 
This is super loud. Let ask them if it's too loud. I, I'll shut it down for when we're talking. But if they hear me, I'm going to keep this thing running because we might actually get something somewhere. Let me go to this for the folks that are looking. So you can see here, it's a little dark because it's not super light, but this is essentially the grid that you get on this. And what this is saying is from top to bottom. So if you have one through eight, right? You can barely see that, I know. Let me, let me get it a little closer. I'm gonna fold this this way. If I can get it a little closer. There we go. There we go. Okay. So one through eight, no limit. On if any, you're going to, on any of the cards. On any no, of the cards. No limit on any of the cards. Yeah, no limit on any of the cards. And then nine through thirteen. So this is the amount of cards you add, and then what you have to do against this this little grid here, right? So five to eight Nvidia of any type, P106 or regular Nvidia cards, and five to eight AMD cards. But the moment you start going fourteen to sixteen, you got to look down this way. There it is. You're done using regular NVIDIA cards. As far as it says here, you need to use 7 to 8 P106s or this. Now, there's some conflicting information here because there's some people down on YouTube that have are showing 1060s on there. The way to read this is if you have 5 P106s, then you can have 8 AMD. If you have 6 P106s, then you've got to have 7 uh, AMDs. That's how you read those two numbers. Same thing with this here. If I've got 14, then I can have seven. Oh, I miss seven. Yeah. I just turned it off where they can hear us. Oh, okay. So I can have seven 106s and I can have seven AMDs. And then, so that's kind of how you read it. You know, this next one is going to be uh, 16, but it would be eight and eight. You can't do nine and seven. You have to have eight, eight and eight. And then when you get to the 17, you have to have 8 regardless, and then whatever remaining, 9 through 11. Nine th the, that yeah. it says AMD, but I'm going to switch back to this. It says, it says AMD, however, uh, I know Invictus Mining shows on theirs, they had GTX 1060s. And then P106s, and they were all NVIDIA. So, I mean, this, this graph is kind of suspect right now, and that's kind of where we're at now. Now that we have the P106s in the house, we can do a lot more testing, add some, add some NVIDIA cards onto it, and see if we can go all NVIDIA and that kind of thing. But the, the, the key catalyst that we were missing in this whole thing is that we didn't have any just right here where I could put the P106s because we already had the other ones deployed. We needed to get more uh, P106s. We got P106s, and now we can test that. So this thing doesn't light up without them, and, and that's one of the issues. We we reached out. I have an open um, ticket with a or with ASUS to see. You know, are they going to do a BIOS update on it where you don't have to have these? Because from an I/O standpoint, we're trying to understand that a, one of the if you have the same kind of I.O. situation with the, the AMD cards where there's no I.O., less IRQs, less, less resources required, and if that's the limitation on the BIOS, then why can't I just have a whole bunch of RX series? Because you can get these cheaper than you can get the P106s. And these out of the box are as fast as these. Now, they use a little more electricity, but you can mod these to 28 mega hash. And so if these are cheaper, if you can get these for the mid-200s or lower... And you can get 28 mega hash out of them. This is your better bet. They do, do get a little warmer than the P106s, though. So it all comes down to that. You're going to get more performance out of the AMD on that since we're talking P106s. If these were like, if you could get a mining card that's based on the 1070 and it, and the price is in like the high twos, low threes, you, might, you then it would be a better deal. But right now, they're not making 1070 mining cards. Yeah, so when it comes down there, I mean, one of the comments there is the board is just impractical. I, that's where we're kind of coming to. I mean, we've had just here, but just Todd and myself just tonight, we're talking through the practicality of this. And the, the problem is, is one out of the box, out of all the mining boards that we've used, the ASRock, the, well, I'm going to, I'm going to give the Biostar a, a, just a pass because we, we've had a lot of problems with Biostar boards, but there's other people that use them and work fine, so I'm not going to. Knock them too bad, but out of the box, they almost everything we've ever plugged in works. I mean, we plug in cards, it works, it goes to its max. 
the the 13 card GPU from uh, the Azrock works like a champ. This was the only one that was kind of like if we use it just for 13, it works. But the fact that we have to have P106s kind of kind of kills the fact of even needing the rest of the thing. So I mean, essentially, we're just buying this for not the reasons of getting it for 19. We're buying it for the reasons that the the PCIe slots are not right up against each other like it is with the Azrock. That's a nice feature. They're spread out enough to where you don't have that potential grounding issue where you have on the the 13 card Azrock board where the the risers are just right up against each other. And a lot of these risers are not built. I don't want to give them a quality hit, but I mean, you know, the the solder isn't the best. So I mean, you, you got overhang, and then if those things are touching, you, they'll start grounding out on each other. You'll get random reboot issues, and you're like trying to figure out what the hell's going on, and it's because your risers are just like right up against each other, and you're getting some kind of weird arc because of the electricity running through it. So I mean, just from a static side, it could be it could be do dormant, you know, things, and if you have two pieces of metal and there's electricity running through it, you can get some antenation on that and have an issue. So, you know, I, I took a little sander thing, grinded some of those things down to make sure I wasn't getting contact. This kind of separates that, and that's fine, but, you know, I guess the pricing's right on it. I mean, they're 159 Is that what they are? Bit? Yeah, it's one, 149 I think I saw 139 today on New Age. Yeah, I mean, I think they're dropping them. Uh, but my experience over the weekend, I built 11 rigs over the weekend, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't be able to do it with this, with this board. I'd be mm -hmm. spending too, way too much time trying to figure out what's you know what's going wrong where I get a uh, one of the Z two seventies and I can pound that out in like mm -hmm. an hour and fifteen minutes. Yeah. I mean so, that's got seven successfully all day long. Right. Um, you can go to nine on the Z two seventy Asus Prime A and AR. Those are the ones that we really recommend that we use uh, quite a bit. Um, you know the uh, it's just suspect. I mean, it really comes down to price point on it. And if you're going to use it for, if you're going to try for 19, it's it's just right on that edge. It's it's the it's the first real dive into something that's over 13, and it's like being the first into it. There's a lot of issues, bugs. They're saying that they're going to upgrade Windows to be able to support more than X amount of GPUs. But if you look anywhere for that level of information, it's not to be found. Like we have not found anything definitive that Microsoft has came out with, that NVIDIA or AMD have reported to say that we are going to, they, they talk that they're enhancing things for GPU rendering, right? But nothing that says that, hey, we're gonna support X amount of GPUs. Unlimited GPUs for Windows. You know, that could maybe change the game on this a little bit, because then I don't have to let, let use, you know, go through an extensive op operation to try to get Linux to work with it. Because I mean, it's in your, why we could sit here and go through that, and we're going to try to go through that for this particular use case and maybe have a solution for people. Um, by and large, the most of the people that are getting into the mining uh, are using Windows, just from a comfort standpoint of understanding the OS. You know, you know it's just niches of groups and people. So, you know, I would say right now, from this side, it's it's probably sticking with the, the ASRock or, you know, the ASUS Prime. Uh, Z270 ARs if you're going to stay with, you know, six to seven cards per rig. Um, and that's just where it's at. Because you're not really saving much here. And, you know, in this in this uh, manual, too, I mean, they're recommending, like, 32 or 64 gig or is it 32 gigs? Or, it actually says on here, like, they talk about saving you money by being able to stack it, but I mean, look at their recommend, and I have not figured out why they would ever recommend this, but if you're building more to have a more stable rig with eight or more, please put 16 to 32 gigs of RAM. Like 32 gigs of memory. Now, 32 gigs of memory is two 16 gig sticks because this thing only holds two two slots. So you're not saving anything if you're buying 32 gigs of RAM. You're spending a lot more money than you would be about building three full systems, right? So it's just not unless they're going to drop memory down to next to nothing, which I don't think they're going to do because they're competing against the SSD market and the NVMe drop market and all that with the, the actual producers. So... Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's you know we're gonna we're gonna continue to work on that this week and see if we can get 
you know, an OS to actually accept everything and then bring that to you guys. Why do you think they suggest more RAM? How would that help? I mean, so there's certain algorithms that require a larger uh, virtual allocation. So, like, you have to go in and set your virtual your virtual memory up really high, 16 to 20 gig. Um, there's a couple there's a couple algorithms out there that require that. I think XMR is one of them. I think it's XMR. Um, but if they're thinking that it's more stable because you you would turn off that virtual allocation or the swap file and then just do it all in the memory, I don't know. It's maybe they have some insight that we don't know that a new coin is going to come out and it's going to be very memory hardened on the actual system memory, um, and they're just getting ahead of the game. Um, but there's nothing that we've seen nor heard. We, I mean, this thing has four gigs of RAM on it, and you're seeing it turn on with 19 cards. And the problem isn't the RAM on us trying to get the OS. It's the OS seeing the P106s. Because just the one OS that we just plugged in here saw the 11 um, AMD cards, and it's just not seeing the P106s. But we see the board is lighting up green, so that we know that the board's seeing it. Um, and if I pulled out, technically, if we pulled out one, two, three, if we pulled out three of the cards and just went with what, eight and eight on this and then booted up Windows, that's going to be one of the tests that I was going to do this week too. Is just I'm going to pull three of these cards, I'm going to boot it up, put Windows on it, and have it do the 16 cards. Um, because that is also, I mean, there's not, you won't go and see YouTube. I mean, we all know that that Windows can do 8 NVIDIA and 8 AMD. However, if you look hard, you know, really far and wide, you don't see too many videos, if any, that have actually 16 cards in Windows running. You'll see 15, you'll see 14, but not a lot that have the, the 8 and the 8. So that'll be one of the videos we can do because we can get the eight manly uh, P106s going and then eight of these um, and at least have, you know, 16 going um, with this current, this current setup. What else we got? Someone mentioned on the Vegas 64 doing two threads on Monero of 19 to 2000 hash each. Yeah, there's a there's a whole thread. I haven't. We, I've been working with getting the the 56 updated with the 64, but I want to do a whole uh, Vega episode, and we'll do Monero. We'll do it with the thread update. We have three total Vegas in here in in the in the studio area. I got two that are right now in here that are just getting configured, um, right here. So we got two of the Vegas in here. 64s and this is kind of our little uh test bench machine so i've been doing some testing with that right now with just different settings and stuff I'm trying to dial them in so i got a fi uh, vega 56 also and we're going to do that update and then we'll have that separate video another video people have been requesting is seeing bro us bringing back the 1950 thread ripper build that we have and doing the game mode test and then some of the other threading tests. We did figure out one of the long standing issues that we had with the Threadripper 1950X is virtual memory allocation is horrible on Threadripper for some reason. So if you have virtual memory set to like 16 to 20 gig, the machine performance goes to the tank. Like, I mean, I'm talking really lagging. It kind of, if you ever get that kind of hollow voice sound, like when you're watching like a YouTube video and you drag a screen and it kind of gives you that kind of echoey, like it's like there's an issue. Um, with like a performance of the machine or something like that. Um, it has a lot of those kind of issues when the virtual memory is really high. So through a lot of testing, when we went and turned off the page file completely, that machine has 64 gigs of RAM. Some, some programs look for swap file and vi virtual memory allocations and they won't run very, they won't run possibly at all or crash if you don't have, if you have no paging file. But most of the newer applications anymore, as long as you have enough memory, they seem to work fine it like was night and day in performance like the thing is just snappy and it just works and i don't have any issues now ha running no page file uh, on the threadwork machine so that would be one of the other side videos i'd want to kind of show it's kind of off mining a little bit more kind of to the tech but i don't see anybody else on youtube really kind of going through deep dives on threadripper so if people really care about that drop comments below and say that yeah we want to see an interactive session with it we'll do that
And any other... I can try another OS on this. He was saying that the CMOS and the, uh, the kernel is limited to 16. If you compile a new kernel to support all 19. On the uh, on the Linux OS. He said if you are using CMOS. Civil mining OS. The kernel is limited to 16. You need to compile a new kernel to support 19. So you'd have to just get uh, when civil mining's booting up and going through its script, you'd have to get it out of its auto boot piece and just do the update on it. I wonder if his check, we'll have to look at the Simple Mining OS to see if when he's doing his check, if it'll throw off his script, if it'll try to re-push the latest update. Oh. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's just booting, it's doing its, its shell, it's booting straight up and loading all of its settings. It does a checksum to see the version. If we go and update the kernel on Simple Mining OS, yeah. if he goes and does a kernel check and he has some kind of checksum in there and it doesn't match whatever's on his server, I don't know, we could play with it and see. I would think that he would show that it's a tight mismatch and try to push the latest update. I think this is Pimp OS. Let me see. That other hard drive was Pimp OS. Was it Pimp OS? Yeah. And we'll let this go over here. Fire up Pimp OS. Which 1080 do you recommend for mining Zcash? Any 1080, that is the cheapest one you can find because all of them have pretty close to the same performance. What about the difference between a 1080 and a 1080 Ti? It's about two to three hundred mega or two to three hundred souls per second. A, a nice 1080 will be 515, 520, maybe 540 uh, souls per second. A, a high end uh, 1080 Ti. Um, did you set something on this for, for Pip to, because I'm just getting the, uh, no. the BIOS. Oh, so, you got to, here, I'll let you do this, because you were messing with this earlier. Yeah. I'll answer questions right now. Did you make a video on Bitcoin Gold and how to get it set up? Um, and will it be profitable? I don't know if it'll be profitable. Um, the, uh, we are looking into compiling their miner. It shouldn't be too bad to compile and put as part of our, our, uh, multi miner. We're planning on to include it in the multi miner. And, uh, you're seeing us set up the, uh, oh yeah, you just need to point it to the, the first bootable. Yeah, I didn't know if you had CSM or any of that kind of no, stuff on there. No. Um, we're going to include Bitcoin Gold in our multi-miner, so in the next week or so we'll have it compiled. It shouldn't be too hard because it's equal hash. It should, it should be just pointing pointing to pools that are supporting it, and then it just rolls. I mean, there shouldn't be too uh, too much configuration on it. Can that PSU do dual 220? Yes. Yes. Do I plan on getting a seven, uh, 1070 Ti when they come out? Yes. We will get a 1070 Ti when it comes out and we'll test it. Is this thing still rolling? No, it's trying. After the fork of E, will it still take forever to get a coin? The fork has happened and the difficulty is, is is slowly adjust, well, the difficulty adjusted, so now it's pred back and predicated on the network. We're gonna let this kind of try to boot. I'll come back to here. So the ETH fork has happened. That happened last night. So now the block time, if you go out to like uh, ether scan and you look at the block time, the block times now are down, I believe right at like 20 seconds, maybe lower, versus like being in the 30 second range. The assurance has been reduced down to three coins versus five. So when you take the math of the block times about 33 seconds, 37, wherever it was at, versus five, 
and now you're going to be back down to about 14 seconds at three. The math adds up to where it's a better it's a better return right now. So if a lot more hash power comes back onto ETH, it's going to just start pushing. You know, it's just a lot more competing. Typically, what happens on halvings, and what people I think are anticipating, is just like in a Bitcoin halving, you have a reduction of influ you know, supply, and technically, the price usually goes up from that. But we'll see. I mean, Bitcoin when it halved in June of what last year, it sat it sat at seven seventy five, seven seventy somewhere around there for like I don't know a couple months, and then it finally started getting back up into closer to a thousand and stuff. So. I mean, is ETH going to go from 340 to 450, 500? I mean, technically it could. I mean, it took a 40% cut in its, uh, you know, a 40 something percent cut in its assurance, its its output um, from at least a coin uh, distribution. Is this thing doing anything? Pimp OS is on DOA on arrival here. Um, so yeah, if Pimp OS or any of these guys, I'm, I'm telling you guys, if if any. Uh, these things are all lit up green, so it's trying to it's trying to page to them. Um, if it, if you know if any of the Pip OS developers or Simple Mining OS developer out there, let me know, and we can see if we about arranging somebody to get get one of these, where they can get get their OS working with it. Any news on Monocoin? It seems to be fluctuating up and down a lot. Which coin? M O N A coin. I don't know. Mono. Mona. 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 I, I have no idea. Mm -mm. Not tracking it. Yeah, I was just looking to see. Yeah, I think I think this is not. Pip OS isn't isn't working. Shut that down. It's gonna get loud, just like a server does. It's pretty much the same story with all of them, I think. Even simple mining. Simple mining just comes up. I think it sees the RXs. It doesn't see the P106s. And then, uh, what was the other OS? Over? NVOS, which is uh, what the Invicus mining guys were using, um, only sees the NVIDIA cards. It doesn't have the, any of the AMD uh, drivers loaded. Do you have BIOS on the Red Devil 8 gigs? Yes. Where? The red, the red devil eight gig. Mm -hmm. With Hynix memory. I don't know if it's Hynix memory, but if you look up, uh, there was a video about two months ago that was all the different RX series. We had the RX four four eighty, four seventies, five seventies, five eighties, different brands, different companies. There was like twelve of them. In that list should be one of the the red devil. Um, both of these the 570 and the 580 this is the uh the golden kind of sample, golden it? sample yeah look at you like a boss man she's got it she's like golden sample what um and then the 570 uh i don't remember if these were hynix or not but these are definitely the bioses we have out there um yeah i think that was it on those ones. He says monocoin or monocoin, whatever it is, is a Japanese coin that's fairly new. Yeah, I haven't seen it. I mean, we can look into it. Uh, you guys drop comments below on this video and tell us what you want to see in the next multi miner release. Where it's it's open right now in development, and we're doing the update to it, and we'll add some more coins. We're pulling off a couple of the coins that don't make sense, and uh, and you can't mine anymore. There. Um, and then we're going to be adding some new coins there. We're going to have Bitcoin Gold on there. Um, you guys tell us below what you want to see in there, and we'll add it for you. How many emails do you get in a day? On Bitsby Trippin'? Yeah. At least 300 to 800, somewhere around there. It just depends. A lot of it's ICO spam. I actually created a filter to filter out anything that has ICO in the uh, in the stuff. We were getting so many ICOs. It's it's almost it's like I seen a couple Twitter posts about people saying that you know they used to get Viagra emails 
and they're getting as equal amount of ICO new ICOs launching emails. It's it's it was like they they said it was the calm before the storm, and it's definitely the storm of ICOs. Ubik's not dead. Ubik is not dead. It's not going anywhere. Ubik Ubik is a platform. Ubik has a mission statement of being a enterprise platform. Enterprise being the keyword in there. It's soft right now, and that's fine. There's Ethereum was setting at two dollars in December of last year, or no, it went down to three, three and some change, and then went back to six and sat at six for like most of December. So. Ubik at $1.20 is equivalent to that to me, to where the second Ubik gets a, a proper DAP or a, a potential pairing with a company that's going to try to leverage their platform even as a test network for their private network, you know, that they have a private chain that they've been working on and they want to deploy it into a public-facing established chain, that's in a chain they could do it on, right? It's a low-cost entry point because the Ubik is not super expensive if they're going to sit there and actually burn Ubi currency as part of the, the gas cost of it. It's going to be a lot cheaper price point entry point, and it's essentially Ethereum with uh, an enterprise thing. It, it's a, uh, we're long on a, a Ubi. I like the vision on it. It makes sense from a business side. There's not a lot of, a lot of cryptocurrencies that can talk that. Do I think Zcash can take Bitcoin head to head? No. I don't think any cryptocurrency out there anytime soon is going to take on Bitcoin ever just because of the the force of magnitude that Bitcoin has behind it. Part of the biggest issue with anything is name recognition. You have the best product in the world, but if your name isn't out there, that's what it is. Bitcoin has a, a, a monolith behind it of momentum. Love it or hate it, whatever. It's got a lot of it's got a lot of perpetual weight now moving with it, and people are, are participating in it. So, we have a how to for the multi miner. I mean, we have several videos that I cover the multi miner, but we do not have a clear and concise micro video. It is on our punch list on the board to cover. Um, We'll be doing that with the next release because the next release is going to separate that that addresses and the wallets out of the main bat file. So that part is a part that we're working on now. So whenever you get any other updates to Multiminer, you don't need to change any of your wallets or anything. You'll just get the new coins that are added, and then you it'll still read your old wallet file and stuff. So we're, we're separating that. That's the next release of Multiminer. And we're going to have some other stuff in there in gold. When we do that, we'll do the, the walkthrough on a small little video. We've gotten a lot of good responses on some of the latest videos that we've been doing. We're doing the micro um, videos like four to eight minutes. Clear and concise. We'll do that for that. Turn it on and mine something. Turn it on and mine something. <laughs> well, I mean, there, I, it won't... Uh, pull some cards. Pull some cards. Yeah. Where is uh, the other OS's? This one, one? Yeah, They're like, so I want to hear it run. I, I got so frustrated, I threw them out the window. You threw them out the window. Well, there's one. I don't know which one it is, but we'll see. We have to get in the BIOS and switch that again. Yeah, to the... Not to. Or delete. I think it's delete, yeah, on this one. It's both. Oh, I'm not... I didn't turn it on. So each time we put an OS in here, you have to switch it to be the primary thing booting. There's that Diog screen. It is super nice, though, to have that. Um, I've seen it a few times on. Just drag and drop that to the top. I like how I switch the position of that and then the bio still says that nothing's changed. Yeah. It's like, what? What? Did it take or no? That threw me off as well. 
Uh, we've tried NVOS. This might be actually the NVOS that we have. Uh, it does not work. The guys that got NVOS working, um, I think this is NVOS. Um, the guys that got that working were doing it all with 1060s. No, that looks like simple mining. I'm getting nothing but static here. There it goes. The simple mining? Yeah. yeah. Again, if you're just catching this and you're seeing 19 cards on there, it is because we are using the P106s for eight of the cards. Yeah, my, that crashes right away. Yeah. Yep, simple mining, dead on arrival too. But I mean, again, if we need to update the kernel to have... So that's going to be the next... Uh... So tonight was really just showing that you can plug it in and it can light up 19 cards. We have some work to do on getting an actual OS to work with it now. So, I mean, the main thing was getting all this laid out, show you guys that we had the P106s plugged in, that we could get it actually to light up at 19 cards because our last three videos with this have been failures, at least with lighting up and posting with more than 13 cards. Um, so, I mean, we have a couple of videos if you want to see what this board does with 13 cards. So I'm not going to go back through that now. Um, I'll answer some more questions. We'll wrap this one up and we're going to work on getting the, the OS of this figured out. You guys can follow us on Twitter and you can see some of those. Uh, if we get actually an OS to see all these cards, we'll post it on there. And of course, we'll do a video um, with it running and we'll test it with other algorithms. You know, we'll test it with ETH and Ubik and uh, Zcash and Monero. I don't even know if Monero's pa ever paged to 19 cards before. What did Windows do with the 19 cards? Windows won't do anything with 19 cards. Windows, Windows will do stuff with 16 cards. Eight. Eight, eight, eight and eight. Type. Yeah, eight, yeah. And eight. Yeah. eight and eight. Yeah. Eight and eight. You guys got any more questions? I'm going to wrap this up right at an hour. We've been going for 57 minutes. I'll take three more minutes of questions. Does everybody understand Byzantine? You guys have seen it? Who's all on Ubik now? Or who's moving off of Ubik and over to Ethereum? Has anybody moved over to Ethereum yet? Have you given up on the Biostar 12? Yes. Have you thrown in the towel? I have three Biostar boards here and none of them work. And I still haven't called them in. There's a, here's a 12. That board worked for one post. It posted once. And then it never posted again. Now I'm 0 for 3 with Biostar boards. So they're dead to me. Until they fix it. Would you sell your Zcash for, into Bitcoin or do you hold Zcash? Holding it. Hold all of them. There's, there's different strategies, guys. You, there's a lot of people that mine and then sell to buy other coins, and that's a, that's a decent strategy too. It's just when are you in, when are you out? Are you locked up into an exchange for a certain amount of time? There's a lot of people that won't mine Ubik, but they'll mine Zcash because it's more profitable for them or another currency, and then they'll buy Ubik. I mean, you can, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's do your research, see what you want to do with what you have, our main task here is to make sure that you guys know how to get things working. Like right here, this was proving that you can get 19 cards on this 19 card board. There's not a lot of videos. There's like one other video out here where one person showing 19 cards working on YouTube right now. So we wanted to bring it from our perspective of showing you 19 cards can actually turn on. Now it's a matter of getting the right drivers and the, the right kernels on the Linux OS 
to either modified simple mining or modify a, just a raw version of Ubuntu and get it working, we get that working, then we'll share that with you guys. We'll say, here's what we had to do, here's the Ubuntu image, here's the script file that we had to use, and then go crazy if you have this board and you want to try to get it. But your limitation is going to be getting P106 cards. And right now these things are like 300 bucks, which sucks. Total says that they are working on an Ethereum miner. Blueberry, she's got to put the final touches on it. Nice. We'll put it part of the. We'll put it part of the multi miner when it gets out there. Why has Zcash had so many ups and downs lately? Why has any cryptocurrency had ups and downs? Zcash relative to any other cryptocurrency, I mean, Ubik went up to three dollars and like thirty cents and is back down to a dollar twenty. It had the same percentage swing. Most of the currencies have. Stellar today was up almost hundred percent because it had some good news from IBM pairing with them. Stellar, I mean, we picked up Stellar on the downfall when it was really falling down, and now it's, it was up hundred percent today because it had some good news. That's the kind of swing that these cryptocurrencies have. That's why I'm saying when people are like, "Oh, Ubik's in the tank." Ubik is one news story from jumping up another, you know, probably 100%, going to back to $2, right? So that's any of that stuff. If you guys buy into that and that speculate that stuff, the, the, there's a lot of speculative price increases because of news of potential use. It's all of, we're all mining this stuff. Does it go up or not? Where did you post that curve where it showed all the ups and downs of Bitcoin, but if you averaged it out and smoothed it, it was still a continual up? Well, yeah, all, no. all of the, so I think we did it on the Facebook group, maybe. So if you guys don't follow us, bitsbetrippin.com, on the bottom of bitsbetrippin.com, you have all of the different social media things that we're connected to. And then we have the, dis the Discord server right there. You guys click on that. There's a huge community out there. It's like 500 people in that community now, 500 plus, that are part of our Discord server that help each answers each other's questions and all that stuff. You guys should drop by, visit, ask a question or two, help contribute. If you know the answer to something, just say, hey, from my experience, this is what it is, right? So that's what it's about. It's not that, oh, we're, you're a know-it-all, I'm a know-it-all, anybody's a know-it-all. It's saying that based on my observation in the two hours that I spent with this, here's what happened. And if everybody does that, we all collaborate, right? And we all, we all get the, a better set of information across each other. Assuming they're discussing the same YouTube video that you've talked about in the past. The guy with the 19 cards working, apparently working, mm -hmm. allegedly working. No, he was he's working. Oh, they were? Yeah, he, oh, okay. he, he came back. I and thought there was that old one. Well, yeah, no. So I, I challenged to set that record straight. So there was a person that came out there in Vicks Mining that came out there and had a really speculative video that just had some screenshots of showing this board show 19 cards. And I was like, Man, we've tried this with like different series of stuff, and it's not working. And it came back to like, you need P106s to make it work. And I'm like, really? That's not the way I was reading the graph. I gave him credit back saying, hey, you're right, dude. And he went through and showed with a cell phone video of like everything. Like he cradled a grave, walking up to the mining machine, turning it on. He did everything I had asked him to do to make sure that, that it was a legitimate thing. So then we replicated that just now. We've proven that you can boot this board up with 19 cards if you have P106 graphics cards. And you need eight of them. There's a couple open questions. Why do I just need P106s? Why can't I just use all mining cards that are like RX mining cards? They don't have IO. They don't they should be using the same amount of resources as these. Is this board just coded because it's got some kind of bio setting in there only to accept? You know, there's some kind of other mechanical thing going on or coding thing in that board to only allow, you know, 19 cards if you hit uh, P106 graphics cards, right? So there's that. But, you know, they had all 19 mining, but they had 1060s. So they had 11 1060s, and then they had eight P106s, all NVIDIA. And then they were using the NVIDIA, the NVOS, which is on Bitcoin Talk. We'll put the link below. So they were using that OS, which had its kernel modified, could see 19 cards, right, for just NVIDIA. So that could be our next test, is I'm trying to get these other mining cards that we've got going on. I could put 1070s here and then probably get that NVOS to work, and we'll probably end up going through that just for the test purposes. But we have made an investment in mining cards to try those out. So we're going to try to get the 11 
RX 470 mining cards with the NVIDIA cards to work. We can get that done, then we can go back into retail cards on the first 11 and, you know, still have to use the P106s. All right, guys, I think we're going to wrap it up. If you have any more questions, you guys can visit us on Discord. Be a boss. You guys can click some links. If you're doing some, you know, that, that shameless plug I always do on Amazon links, help any YouTuber, us, other YouTubers. If you guys are doing any shopping, go out there and hit those affiliate links. You're doing it. You're, you're boss when you're doing that for everybody. We, you know, we get that benefit and we bring good content. We try to bring good content to you guys and meet what you guys are asking for. Check us out on bitsbetrippin.com. Share, like, subscribe, and go out there on that Discord channel and put in the suggestions of what you want to see. Because we do draw that from that content, and hopefully you do see some of the stuff you guys are asking for. At least us answering, trying to answer the questions. Do we sleep? Not much, man. Not much. Every day. Alright, guys. We'll catch you on the next one.